Hello? All right. Hello, uh, I'm Anson Brown, yet one more time, and we're now going to go over the second part of this, which is the creation of a box guitar. So the end product is going to look like this. It's braced on the inside, on both the surface and the back. It has the bridge, the saddle, it has a string, it has a neck, and how we're going to tune it is by pulling the string back and using a binder clip. Okay, so, let's go over the materials. The materials are as follows. You're going to have one cereal box, or a cereal box-like object, and preferably more than 10 inches in length, in height. So this should be more than 10 and a half inches, or so. Uh, we're going to have all of this, which we'll go over in just a second. Uh, so we have the cereal box, parchment paper to work on, or wax paper, works just fine. Going to need a toilet paper roll. I've already used this one to make a different box guitar, but toilet paper roll, paper towel roll will work fine. Uh, also a wrapping paper roll, if you feel brave enough to try and cut one of those, would actually work very, very well. Masking tape, because it doesn't stick to the glue, so we can use it to add pressure to what we're gluing down, so it will glue down evenly. Glue, fishing line, and I suggest it doesn't really matter what kind of fishing line, uh, but I do suggest anywhere from 15 pound test to 30 pound test. Anything smaller is going to be hard to work with, and anything bigger is going to produce a note that's so low that you'll have to pull it really, really tight to even hear it. So I would probably stay between probably 10 is the lowest and 40 is the highest, but somewhere between 15 and, and uh, 30. This is 25 pound here. This is what I used. You're going to need some ability to cut, so I actually find that a pocket knife works quite well. I also have a razor blade, an X-Acto knife from X-Acto, and some sort of instrument to mark with. So I have this, and I have this. Whichever you prefer, whichever you marks better, I would prefer something with a finer point. This is a gel pen. Uh, a dark pencil will work quite fine. So anything you can get to actually write on both, or write on wood with. You'll see examples from both. Okay, so now we get to here, and this is kind of the diagram of how this is set up. So the back bracing, so the stuff that goes on the back here, these here, is set up like this. Here, and we have nine popsicle sticks that go on the back. Over here, we have the sound hole, so that is what actually goes on the surface. So that's actually what's underneath here. So if you look and you look up and over onto the bottom of the surface here, you have this pattern here. So I have the sound hole there for that, which this here is seven popsicle sticks. And that's going to be all of your bracing is going to be 16 popsicle sticks. Now, we have a couple of options for the rest of the popsicle sticks. Is going to be here is the saddle, is what I did here. Is I have the saddle was cut in half and glued onto itself, so this is technically only one popsicle stick, and one popsicle stick for the bridge, or the piece of wood that the saddle rests upon. Now you can, have two popsicle sticks for the saddle, if you wish. That's fine too. That won't make a difference. It's just if you're willing to cut popsicle sticks, this saves you a popsicle stick, depending on how many you have to make. All right, that's your bridge and your saddle. Now, for the nut, for the popsicle stick, is you're going to use a fourth 
of a popsicle stick. This and this. Okay, those are the popsicle sticks you have, or you're going to need in total, which is going to be about 20 popsicle sticks. Always have about five more sitting on the side just in case something happens. Uh, yeah, so moving on is we have one 12 inch paint stirrer. You can use larger ones, but you'll have to modify the measurements a little bit when gluing to the box. But this is a 12 inch paint stirrer and six toothpicks, uh, preferably flat because they're easier to work with. They won't roll around on you. So you can just take them, press them down onto the neck and you should be fine. Five of these are going to be frets. One of them is going to be attached to the nut. As you can see here, got frets. And then one is attached to the pops the fourth of a popsicle stick, and then there's the toothpick upon it, which creates the nut. All right. So, in total, what you need here. Oh, I should also mention you should probably have something that you're willing to cut into. I have a uh, a, a cloth mat, like a cloth cutting mat. So I'm willing to do any type of cutting or anything like that. That's if you were going to try and, and cut the popsicle sticks or anything, score anything. And uh, so it'd be good to have something that you're willing to uh, accidentally bury a blade into and won't care if you put a hole in it. Okay, so now we've gone over this and I will put up a, an exact listing of absolutely everything you need, just straight list for a single guitar. So just multiply it by however you need to make and that will be your total material costs. Oh. All right, so what I have for you is how you're going to pick the materials. Now when you buy paint stirrers, what I want you to do, especially if you buy them in a big pack, if you are going to buy them one at a time at a paint store or a hardware store, you're gonna to have to do this kind of sort of in the store to some degree, but if you buy a large pack of them, then you have a large pack of them and you can compare and contrast what you have here. So first off, the very first thing that we are probably going to notice about a couple of these is that this one is relatively flat. You can still see a bit of a bounce in it when you press it. That's okay. These ones are nearly unusable. The curve is so bad that this is not going to give you a flat neck, even in any way, shape, or form. So your main problem is that if you have your nut here and the string goes along, it's gonna hit a hump and then it will go off. Conversely, if you have it the other way, like this, you have your nut here, the string goes along, it goes perfectly at first, and then all of a sudden, all the strings, when they're pressed down and the string lowers at this end, they'll all hit this edge popping up. So, to try and choose one of these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the flattest one possible. It just sits as flat as possible. Now, when it comes to paint stirrers, they do not rectify these in any way. They are not attempting to make these so that they're structurally usable. This thing is, you grip it, and you stir, that's all you do. So they're not intending for these to be flat or perfectly flat. But when you find a flat one, what I want you to do is that it will curve in one way or another. You will invariably find this. You're never gonna find a perfectly flat one. So what I want you to do is I want you to find which way it curves. So this one is curved like this very slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down so that it's curved like this. I want it curved that way. So instead of concave, where it goes, starts up at the top, goes down in the middle, and up here, that is no. We're going to turn it over so it's convex and comes up like this. So that's going to be the one you use because any slight variation at the end of this thing coming up, it has a, a large chance of messing up your string as it is played on a fret. 
So we're always going to want the neck to be uh, convex. And that's how you choose your paint stirrer. All right. All right, so choosing your popsicle sticks. Now, this is a little bit weirder because they have to be flat, but it doesn't matter what they look like. So you have a popsicle stick that looks like this, but it's perfectly usable because it's flat, or f most, mostly flat. Unlike this one that has a twist in it, that's bad. This one's not terrible, but one of the ends lifts up. Not desirable. Here is a really bad one. It lifts up a lot. And here, the middle of it is a bit uh, bowed. So these are going to be difficult to work with and somehow, unless somehow you can get them pressed down really hard onto the surface while they glue. Which is possible if you're running out of popsicle sticks. You can use masking tape or you can use a heavy object wrapped in parchment or wax paper to press them down while they dry. Then they will effectively be entirely glued to the surface. But if you're going to let them free dry, try to avoid these. Now popsicle sticks have a tendency to be flatter more often than the paint stirrers simply just because they're so short and they have a they're less likely to bend in the process of cutting them and during transit or storage so it's just harder to bend these so you're going to end up with a lot more flat ones of these all right so step one so we're going to have our cereal box and our cardboard cylinder. From whence it came is up to you, but a cardboard cylinder nonetheless. Because this is going to turn into our heel block. This is going to prevent the neck, as it attaches to the body, from just tipping into the body. And I will show you. This is an instrument that I made without a heel block, because I was desperately trying to prevent you from having to make one. But didn't work. So, no heel block, and your neck will do this. It will be very, 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 very loose. So, we can't have that, because as this thing is loose, as you press onto it, this thing keeps changing, which will change the tuning of the string. So, none of these will matter if you press this one way or the other because it keeps changing the tension of the string and a little bit of the length. So it makes this, or renders this, this whole entire thing here utterly useless if this moves. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our cylinder here. Well, actually, let's, let's define something here. This crease on the cereal box, so not the flap, this crease here is the top. You're eventually going to fold this in and close it and glue it, but we're going to keep that open for now. But the top of the box is thus. It, that is the top of the box, not the top of the flap, but where that crease is, is the top of the box. Just make sure you know that. The bottom of the box is going to be where it is sealed and not. it tells you not to open it. That's the bottom of the box. Okay, so what we have is a cereal box, and from the top of the box, the crease again, we're going to take the cylinder and we're going to put the edge of the cylinder at the edge of the box, but still inside the box. Make sure it's going to be able, once it's inside the box, to fit inside the box. So we're going to take this. And then we're going to go get one of our drawing implements as such to just be kind of careful. And you're going to mark where that cylinder, so you have the diameter of the cylinder here. That's where that cylinder is going to go. Now, what you can do, you don't have to do it, but you can measure the box, 
and put it exactly in the center if you want. This one is seven and a half inches so that I know now that this is going to be oof, can't do math. three and three quarters. So I almost got it just about in the middle there. The middle of the box is going to be somewhere right here. Again, the exact center, mm, shaky. It doesn't really matter that much. We're not building an actual guitar that needs to maintain a massive amount of pressure for the least amount of work. So, now that we have that, what I would suggest, and this is kind of the easiest thing to do, is just cut a hole. So you get your knife. So there's that knife, and then we have the X-Acto knife here. Now the hole should be, I mean, if you needed a reference, about four inches or so wide. No, it doesn't have to be exact, and I'm going to show you that right now. It really just has to be big enough for you to get, reach your hand in and get a popsicle stick in. So we're going to do this, and I'm just going to freehand it. Now be very careful on the puncturing. And then we're just going to take this, and we're just going to cut ourselves out a little circle. This does not have to be elaborate. You know what? It doesn't even have to be accurate. So we have a circle. or what I'm eventually going to keep calling a circle, even though my version of a circle is um, not uh, geometrically sound. Yeah, maybe I'll cut a little more of this off here. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm just really embarrassed of having that notch. Or maybe I'm more embarrassing than just fighting this thing. All right, so there is my hole. If you need more of a guide, you can always use a compass. And I would measure, so after you've gotten this down here, I'd measure two and a half inches, and that would be the center of the hole, and then about a two, yeah, about, yeah, a 2.5 inch radius. So you measure from your marking, from your cylinder, down two and a half inches, put a compass there, measure the compass back up to where your cylinder was, turn, and you should have about a five inch hole. But right now, we're guesstimating. And that is step one. Step two. Now we have to start gluing things. So we're going to have our glue, and we're going to start with the back of the instrument. So that is the surface that you can see through the sound hole. This is the back. So we're doing a back bracing. None of the braces are going to be on the surface of the instrument anywhere. They're all going to be inside. You're going to have two sets. You're going to have a back brace, which goes here, and you're going to have a surface brace, which goes in here, down at the bottom, and there's going to be a heel brace right here. So first we're going to start with the back brace. So they're going to be in this pattern as such, and I'll show you exactly here. So we're going to take the back of the box, and it is going to look like this. On the inside. Oops. On the inside, it will look like this. So we're going to move these off. We're going to put them back into the area in which they were. And we're going to start gluing. So now you can free if your if your toothpicks are rather I mean your sorry pops if your if your popsicles are rather flat, you can just free glue them on without having too much in the way of having to deal with pressing them down. If you have to press them down, you can always use masking tape to press them down with, or to hold them down while they'll dry. So we're going to take this, we're going to put a generous amount of glue on. The idea is to make it so when you press this down, it coats the entire 
stick. So then we're going to take this, we're going to put it inside the box, and remember, it's okay to get your fingers really messy. We take this and we're going to slide it all the way down until we hit the bottom of the box. You press it down, and that will be your first popsicle stick. And then we're going to do the same things to these ones here. So these are the two side ones. Take this. Another generous amount of glue. And put that in here. Kind of flop it in. Put your hand through here. Put it down in a corner into where it's kind of pointing diagonally. And press down. We're going to do the same with this, this one here. You also, if you have a small enough hands, you can also just reach straight in here like that and push it down, especially if you feel like you're wasting glue, which I do get. Push it down. And now you have one third of your brace. You can see it in there a little bit. You have it in here. So it's a, a line with two ribs. It's kind of like having a spine going straight down and then ribs coming out the side. So now we're going to do that with the upper one. So again, here, put this directly on top of it, of the previous one. So they're touching. Press it down like that. And you have your other two ribs. And make sure these do not go above this. And what I mean by that is do not put this here. Do not make this popsicle stick go above this line here. Because something else is going to go there. So you want it to be below that stick. So we're going to put this here. There, there. Oops, no. Flopped around. Oh no, it got glue on, on things. Who cares? Moving on with our lives. All right, press down, press down. And now, hopefully it all stays to some degree. We have this. It has a back brace all the way up. Okay, and that, step two. Okay, so now we're back here and we have step three, which is going to be the surface brace. So, it's kind of kind of look like the back brace, it's just like a half of a version of one, and it's going to have a whole brace. So, we put this upon the box, we're going to have it here, as such, here, and here like this. That's what it's going to look like underneath the surface. So now, this could be a little trickier. If you wait for the glue to dry from step two, this is actually a lot less tricky because you can't, you won't be able to move the other sticks and they're most likely to be popped off. But if you're going to do it while the other sticks are still wet, it does get a little tricky because you can't bend the box too much. You bend the box too much, the other things will pop off. So, the first stick is we're going to figure out how to hold this thing. And most likely, it's going to be like this, and then you're going to put the sticks in through the sound hole. You can see that here. You hold it like that, and then you take the stick here. It's up and through the sound hole, and that's how you're going to place the sticks in there. That's the easiest way to do it without bending the box too much. So. I would take this off to the side so you can pick it up without moving it around too much. And then again, a generous amount of glue. Again, you pick up the box. 
here, here, and about in the center. Again, accuracy is not really your problem as such. And now you have, it's very difficult to see, I apologize, but you have one stick inside. And now you're going to make it basically look like the back brace. So you're going to have two ribs coming off of the side as well. And here. Here. Again, take the box, rip it up, hold it like this. And then you're going to put in one diagonal. Get it down to the corner. Yep, there it is in the corner, somewhat. Somewhat. We're not going to be too complaining about the whole subject. And there it is. All right, then we have two more to put in. One is going to be the opposite rib, as such. And there's the other rib. You can see it, you have the three ribs. Now the only difference here is that you're going to have a brace on the sound hole. So, again, you're going to have a brace that goes across here. So here's the top of the box, and you have a brace that goes right across the bottom of the sound hole. Let's turn this back over again. Then we go over here, we pick up the box in the same way here, as such, we're going to take this stick, and you're just going to put it in, right up against the sound hole, there, press it down, and then I would let this whole thing dry a bit, so that you can't pop any of the sticks off immediately from doing anything. All right, now we're going to do the heel block. Heel block is going to be your toilet paper roll. It is going to be six toothpicks, three for the bottom of the toilet paper roll, and three for the top of the toilet paper roll. And these are going to be glued inside the box at the top. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to put the toilet paper roll inside the box. Now let the box sit as naturally as possible. Even, yeah, just, just as naturally as possible when you can. So try and always do this down on the table, but just to demonstrate here. And then you're going to mark exactly where the height of the box is going to be on the roll. So here, here. So now I have my height from here to there of my box. So technically it's the depth of the box. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutting implement and as, as flat as possible, it's about the only thing that may have a, an effect, is cut where that is. If you're using a sharp knife, which I actually suggest that you use, be extremely careful. Make sure your fingers are not near the blade as you cut. If you slip, you want to make sure the blade goes away from you or has nowhere to go. Such as here, it doesn't go away from you necessarily, but it will go straight into the table. Do this, take that, and there we go. Sort of flat, kind of, kind of messed it up around the, the side here. Flatten out a bit. All right, and this should kind of almost barely fit in should fit in pretty decently 
along the side here. It should fit in pretty loose if you just put it in the side or the top. I apologize. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our bottom heel block here and we're going to get our glue. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of glue here along the bottom of it. We're going to put it down pretty much in the center. Right there. Then, along the sides, you're going to drip some glue. So that glues the inside of the cylinder to it. And then what you can do, this is an easy way to do this, is you just take this here and you move it from side to side. Make sure you get it all gluey and stuff. Put it there, there. Perfect, perfect. Put something of any weight. I have a tape measure here. I'm just going to put that on top and just wait for that to settle and kind of just congeal enough to where I can pick this thing up and it won't move. All right, now that we have it so that it just doesn't see, it's not completely dry, but it's not going to move on me. So that's about a lo as long as we need to wait. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another bead of glue here along the edge. Really if it drips down the sides, that's absolutely fine. And then we're going to take this here, and we're going to put it on the other set of the heel block. Now it's not super important, but I would mind it a little bit is to make the toothpick or the popsicle sticks line up. The top ones are parallel with the bottom ones. Mainly because you're going to put this whole entire thing inside the top of it. And then again, we take this and we place it on top. And hope for the best. Hopefully after about 20-ish uh, minutes, this should be completely solidified. I did this, the, the bottom one, I waited maybe three minutes for it to kind of adhere, and then I was able to turn it over and put it on the top. And then we wait for that. Okay, so now we're moving back, and while we're letting the heel block dry, and we're, I don't know how your progress with the box is doing, but we're letting the ribs and the bracings of that all dry. So, one thing you can do while you're letting all of these other things dry is that you can create, especially if you have to create multiple versions of these, you can create a stick with all of the measurements on it. I will put the measurements up here for an 18 inch length. This is what we're all making, an 18 inch string length box guitar. So I will have this, all of these lengths put up here at the uh, end of this here. But what we're going to do, if you have to make multiple versions of these, is you're going to take this, you're going to put it side by side, and it's <clears throat> how you're going to measure every single one of them. And it's going to be quite simple if you have this measuring thing. So we're going to go here. This is the nut. Fret 1, fret 2, fret 3, fret 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, ten. We're only going to go up to the tenth fret for now. In fact, we're only going to put five frets on this entire thing. So we're going to have one here. We're going to have one here, 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 and here. So technically, this will be frets two, four, five, seven, nine. Those are going to be the frets you're going to put on. And this is so that you can't really play a wrong note. And that will be 
where your nut is going to go, and this is where all of your toothpicks are going to go. And then again, I would highly suggest making something like this so that you can just keep putting in new necks over and over again, and then just keep drawing them in. All right, so next is the saddle on the bridge. Try to get these all nice and glued up. Now I have two different options here for you. Now you can take two popsicle sticks and glue them together as such. Just take two popsicle sticks and glue them together. And then you will glue them on the bridge. And then that will be your saddle and your bridge. Or the other option is you are going to divide roughly in half. So these are your saddles. And then you're going to score the middle of it with your cutting device carefully. You're going to flip it over and you're going to do it with the other side. Make sure there's a nice score in there. You're going to take this and you snap it really fast. And you get a clean break. And then you fold them over on themselves and you have a saddle. This just saves you a, tooth, uh, a popsicle stick. If you have a plethora of popsicle sticks and you just wish to uh, do two popsicle sticks glued to themselves, absolutely, absolutely fine. So in order to make the bridge, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two pieces here. So we have the two pieces. And we're going to glue them together. Here. So put glue on one. Take the other one. And smoosh it on. So you see glue coming out on either side. All right. Next. You're going to take that and you're going to glue, put a little bit more glue, however much is necessary, on that side. And you're going to glue it to the bridge, roughly in the center. And you're going to press down as such. And voila, you have a bridge and a saddle. So the, we're going to show you how the bridge is actually going to hold the string on later and then how it's going to work with the saddle. And that is a bridge and a saddle. Back to the neck. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the neck out and we're going to measure one popsicle stick. Remember, it's just you can use that method for cutting popsicle sticks like I'm going to do right now. Or you can get out a saw, you can get out something. So my popsicle stick needs to be about an inch. So I'm going to go over here to the inch marker right here and we're going to score it as such Oops. over here another inch score it as such Oops. try not to do this on a music stand these move music stands are for demonstration purposes only all right, now that we have it scored, we're going to take this, and again, a count of three, we're going to snap it, and hopefully it should come off nice and clean. So, uh, one, two, three. Ooh, failure. Didn't do it right. All right, so we're going to try the other side. All right, one, two, three. Ooh, failed again. Ooh, these are really... That's really wet. Now, if this is really wet, it will do that. I'm gonna try this one more time, except I'm gonna do this on the camera over here. All right, did it that time, ha ha. Okay, so now, go back over here. We have our neck, and then we're going to grab parchment
as such. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to glue the fret and the nut on. The frets and the nut. Okay, so you're going to grab your toothpicks here. And your nut. All right, so the nut gets glued on. Now, where this nut is supposed to be, right here at the top of the neck, we'll actually draw a nice little line here for you. Right here, this is the nut, this line. Now, it's important to note that this line here, that is where the toothpick needs to be, not necessarily the popsicle stick. So I can put this here in the middle of the line, and that should be fine as long as the toothpick is on that line over the top of it. Because this nut measures where this toothpick needs to be, not necessarily the popsicle stick. But for tints and purposes here, I'm going to glue this right on the line. So we take this. Put more glue, like that, here, and we're going to push it right up so it just covers the line. Just. And then we take our toothpick, put a little bit on that, and you take it. You're going to put it right at the edge of this popsicle stick. And if you need something to press it down with, you can use another toothpick. Now, depending on the type of per, uh, people you're dealing with, the students, um, you may want to have these nuts already pre-made so that they can just glue them straight on. Uh, you may even want to have these measured out pre, uh, in advance so that they don't have to guess where they're going to go. Um, but that's just going to depend solely on the student's capability, the time. And now all the lines we have down here, this is where frets go. Now if you have, um, let's say, an advanced high school class, you could have them entirely measure this out themselves and they can put on all the frets. But if we're going to deal with younger audience, then most likely what we're going to have is just the frets that are going to be required for whatever song or piece of music we're trying to play. So here we're just going to put on all natural notes or diatonic notes. So we have it on fret two here. And I mean, they should be relatively straight. They don't have to be super straight. We're gonna have it on fret four, put a fret four on. So this is why I'm saying this is fret 4, is technically this is fret 1, 2, 3, and this is where 4 would be. Right about there. Again, you can always use another toothpick to squish it a little bit. This is not the flattest paint stirrer. Alright, and then we have this here again, more, more glue. And then this is going to be fret 5. Right there. Fret seven. And for any of you music people out there, this is your fifth. So from the from the nut to this fret is going to be the interval of a fifth. And fret nine, which is your major six. Which is all I need for the song that I'm going to end up teaching on this. Now fret 10, I would always mark this because that is where we're going to attach the neck. We're going to use this as a guide to attach the neck to the body. So you don't have to put a fret there, but definitely put a mark there so that we know exactly where to attach the neck onto the body. Now we're back to this. 
And what we're going to need to do with this is put this in. The heel block. So, this might get a little messy. So what you're going to do is you're going to ruthlessly slather glue onto the top and bottom. I would do this one fast before it starts dripping everywhere. Okay, okay. And then what we're going to do is right about where you measured this thing to begin with, in the middle of So in the middle of the box, and then you're going to line the edge of the cylinder up with the top. So that crease again, that's the top. And you're going to line both edges of the cylinder up with it so that you can close it. You wipe up all the glue little splatters that you do, and you just don't tell anybody about those. And what you're going to do after this is you're going to actually put something heavy on this. You actually have to do put something heavy on this because the edges of the popsicle stick are going to make it bow. So... You have to find something, you know, put your rolls of masking tape on there. Make sure the, uh, the sides of the box are relatively uh, right, right angles so that it will dry correct, co uh, correctly. Let's see, what else can I do on this? Put clipboard, uh, measuring tape, you know, be creative but get some pressure down on top of it so that all of those pieces down there do glue evenly. Or as much of the glue that is on the sticks glue the sticks to the box as possible. So a good book will do that too, but I would, I would suggest wrapping the book in parchment first. You don't know kind of what seeps around or where the glue gets. All right, and we are back. So we have thus far, we have the back braces on, we have the surface braces on, see in the, back, in the back over there, we have the heel block ready to go, and now what we're going to do, oh actually also you should have your neck ready to go, and your bridge and your saddle. So, only three steps left. We're gonna get our glue. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold in all the flaps and you're gonna fold it like you're, you're closing up the cereal box and I'm gonna, we're gonna wanna put glue on all of the pieces that previously had glue. So all the pieces that are now going to touch are going to have glue on them as such. So the little wings, and remember this flap goes under, or at least on these particular area boxes. Uh, here. Here. All right. Once you have all those glued up, you close the cereal box. It's going to be messy. Gonna have no choice in this matter. And the heel block is actually going to make it kind of difficult to do. So then once you get it more or less sort of kind of, yeah, that's a professional term right there. I'm gonna take a masking tape. Like this. You put it on one side. Make sure it's a secure, and then as tight as you can, you're going to press it down to the other side. It's kind of like you're nailing a package. Tear it off, secure it, and there you go. That's good to go. That should not budge. That should just be fine. You could even leave it on for the future pro for the final product. Doesn't matter. So now what we're going to do, since that's secured, that's out of the way. Probably won't even get messy. What we're going to do is we're going to attach the neck. Now the neck is going to go right over that block. So you can feel around underneath the neck or underneath the body for the heel block. And you can feel just kind of more or less where it's supposed to go. 
And then you line it up with that 10th fret that you could have put a 10th fret on or left it, but you had to mark because that is where the neck is going to meet the body right there. So, and we have kind of a position and in case you want to make it exact, so you should be able to push this down and feel something very solid. So we're going to make a mark, make a mark, or you can eyeball it. It's not super specific. It doesn't absolutely need to be absolutely the right place. So then you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to say about to there, and you're going to cover it in glue. All kinds of glue. <clears throat> we're going to go over here. We're going to take this, we're going to put it right there. Remember, I have some smoosh room. And then voila, there is your neck. Got to make sure that the uh, thing is just in the right place. Now it's going to be a little top heavy, so I would suggest putting something on top of it. Just like that. And then from there we can work. Well, move it off to the side here a bit. Okay, so we're going to cut off our yard long piece of string. So you're going to have a piece of uh, fishing line here, about a yard long. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this, you're going to loop it like you tie a normal knot, just a standard plain knot. And then you're going to loop it under like a normal knot, except you're going to do it three times. Two and three. And then you're going to pull it through. And that will be your knot. And then you're going to cut off the little tape. Okay, now, now that you have your string, you're going to take measuring tape, and from the nut, you're going to measure out 18 inches. I already have a mark down here, but 18 inches from the nut to the saddle, not to the edge of the bridge, but to the saddle itself, the edge of the saddle. So that's where the saddle needs to sit. Okay, so, what we're going to do... So you're going to take this, and this is how the string is attached to the entire instrument, and you're going to have the knot facing the bridge. You're going to have your saddle glued and ready to go. Maybe even a little more glue for my purposes here. Just a little bit more. Good old ton of glue. Now you're going to have this here. You're going to kind of eyeball down the neck or so, about where that's centered, ish, so that the neck, or the string will go across the neck. Then we're going to put our saddle down, or our whole bridge, and then you're going to pull the string through just until it hits the bridge. I'm not trying to yank it off or anything, but you're going to pull it through so that it touches the bridge. Then, now that you have, so the knot is on this side, on the next side of the bridge, and it's pulled underneath the bridge, and then we're, after we let it dry, it's going to loop over like that. But right now, we're going to grab ourselves some masking tape here. This is another reason why you might want to cut these saddles in half, is so that you have these little wings here you can tape down. And you do this, holding it down, pushing it down onto the box, Another piece for the other side, as such. So it holds this nice and steady. And if you're a little paranoid for it coming up, you can always grab a little thinner piece here. This always works. And you can go on either side of the string right over the saddle. This would be work if the popsicle stick that you were using wasn't necessarily very flat. But you can take this and increase the pressure coming down on it. As such. And then you have your object here sitting there. And when this all is finally dried, you can then put together your instrument. 
So take this here. I have one pre-made here, and as you can see, you have the uh, the back bracing, the top bracing is there, you have your heel block there, you have your neck, and then this is what we're going to do. So you have your string that's glued down underneath your bridge, you pull it up over the top there, and that creates your saddle. You're going to pull it up down the center of the neck, and then you're going to pull on it as such, you know, not too tight, comfortably tight, and definitely not enough to break the instrument. Then you take a binder clip, and you put it over the top. And then you get an instrument that can be played. So, that will be conclusion of this, and then we will have a, another lesson on how to actually play this instrument uh, on Twinkle Twinkle. Thank you very much.